That's too low. Yeah, that's that'll work. Welcome back to another episode of Bee Fishing. Um, today I got one for you that should be uh, a little bit controversial. Not really, it's just knots. I mean, there's really nothing to it. It's just several knots. So what we're gonna be doing is I want to show you my three favorite knots to tie, when to tie them, and uh, why I chose those knots. It's a question I get a lot on the channel um, of, hey, how do you tie this knot? Or how do you tie that knot? There's three knots I found that will get you out of 95% of all situations. Um, and we're gonna go over those today. Let's roll the intro. I may even include some extras, just throwing that out there. There's maybe some extras in there that if you don't like these, you can try these other ones that'll fit in the same scenario. Uh, roll the intro, let's go. So what we've got is I'm going to use this white, this is actually like catfish, like trot line top line right here, this white line. I'm going to bring you all around so you all can see better, but pretend this is either mono or fluoro. Every time I use this white line, it's going to be mono or fluoro. Then I've also got some braided line. This is actually, I think 250 pound or 300 pound braid, really big braid that I only use on like saltwater rigs uh, for shark fishing. Um, when I don't want to use mono. Uh, not that I do a lot of that, but I do have it. Again, these knots are easy to tie. They're gonna get you into, through 95% of the situations you're gonna find yourself on the water. So that's the reason I'm showing you these. Uh, we are in the actual Bee Fishing Studios. If you've never joined, if, if, you, if you're new to the channel, uh, hit the subscribe button and join us live on the Bee Fishing Live every Wednesday night. Anyway, let's get into the knot tying. And uh, first knot I'm gonna show you is the Palomore knot. 90% of the time I'm tying this knot. This knot can literally be tied on almost anything. Um, and we're gonna use my shark fishing hook, my big hook here. We were gonna use that hook. We're gonna use the giant shark fishing uh, circle hook here and I'm gonna show you how to tie the Palomore knot. Um, we're gonna tie this. This is a good fluoro, braid, uh, mono, it, this goes with all of them. You can tie this one literally on anything and 90% of my situations I tie this one. And then I'm going to give you a reason not to tie it. Um, so let's get into this and we'll bring y'all around so y'all can actually see. So I've got y'all actually on the GoPro right here so hopefully y'all can see. We've got our hook and this is how you tie the Palomore knot. So basically you're going to go through the hook, the eye of the hook once pull you some line out and go through twice. So we have our line going through twice. It is very important and will help you if you do not twist this line. Don't put a twist in it. That actually weakens the line or weakens this knot a ton. So don't twist it. Try to keep it as straight as possible. All you're gonna do is take this and you're gonna do one of these overhand knots. So we're gonna bring them together like so and take that loop we're gonna go through the loop so basically just like you were starting to tie your shoes and without twisting it try not to twist it go all the way over your lure in this case it would just be the hook so you go all the way over with that loop and then you cinch it down now the important thing about this knot especially if you're using this on fluoro or mono is you want to lubricate the mess out of this knot before you cinch it down, okay? I mean, I'm talking about get your tongue in there like you just finished your first hot date because this knot will create some friction on that fluoro and mono and really weaken it and you just cinch it down and that is it. That is it with this knot. You can actually look at it and see that I don't have any twists in that knot. That's a really, really good knot. Well, here's a con about the Palomore knot is you end up with a lot, usually you have a pretty long tag end on your knot so there's a long tag there and i'm going to show you a reason why this where this knot does not really work good um, and a knot to, to get you out of it so let me cut this one we're going to tie the palomore knot again and i'll show you another application for the palomore knot that is very very good a minute ago i fed the knot to the for the front of the hook so where the hook is actually up like this i fed it through the front not the back but i fed through the front so let's go through this knot again 
and we'll pull out a good bit of tag end here, okay? So a lot of tag end. We're gonna go back through. I mean, y'all see how much tag end I've got here? I've got a whole lot of knot there. So I want a lot, I want a long tag end here. And some of you guys may know what I'm doing already. So overhand knot right there, right? Again, try not to twist your knot. You don't want to twist it, all right? And I'm actually going to take this tag end. I'm going to pull it as tight as I can. I want a long tag end. Just keep the knot straight and then cinch it down. Again, lubricate. Lick the fire out of this. So we got our Palomar knot all cinched down. Now we're going to take this tag end right here. We're going to go right through the top of that hook, okay? Boom, like so. Now, what I've just done is I have made a drop shot. Drop shot rig. Now that is an offset circle hook and also it's super heavy, which is why it's leaning. But you see how that thing sticks straight out when I pull on it? This tag end right here, you put your uh, drop shot weight on and when it pulls, that hook stands straight out, you've got a drop shot. So the Palomar not only is a knot that you can tie to a chatterbait, crankbait, you know, worm, uh, anything really. You can tie Palomar to almost anything, um, but you can also use the Palomar knot for that drop shot if you leave yourself enough tag end. So, that knot's great. Palomar can be used literally in almost any application, but here is when you don't want to use your Palomar knot. If you are using leader, okay, your Palomar knot leaves a long tag end. It's just the nature of that knot. You have a lot of tag end that you have to chop off, okay? So, not a bad thing when you're doing a drop shot because you want that tag end to be long so you can hang your, hang your weight down there. Now, if you're fishing like a, a Carolina rig, for instance, you don't want a long tag end because up to that barrel swivel, you've only got a finite amount of leader, right? You don't want to keep taking big chunks every time you get two or three fish and it's time to retie. Palomar knot doesn't work really well for that. So knot number two of my knots that you need to know is the improved clinch knot the improved clinch. So let's turn back around. Let's look how to tie this thing. The improved clinch knot. This knot is really, really good if you don't want a long tag end. So I would use this on my Carolina rigs. If I'm worm fishing any kind of leader, if I can get away with this knot on a leader, I'm definitely going to do it because it's going to save me that extra line on that tag that I've got to cut. So what you're going to do is you're going to come through the hook once and you're just going to twist. The more you twist, the stronger the knot, but really you just want about five. And this right here, that little, where it goes through the eye, it creates this little bit of an opening right there where my finger is. Hopefully y'all can see that little hole right here. We're gonna take this little bit of a tag and come back through that opening. So just like that. And then, now we've left this. So from where the circle, where all these twists are, where my finger is, where I've come back through, right? I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go through this hole. And then I'm just gonna pull. Boom. Again, same thing as the Palomar knot. Lick, lick, lick that thing. Get some saliva on it, because what it does is all those little twists bunch down um, and can create some real bad friction in this area when you tighten it down but that is the improved clinch knot. And look at my tag end, my tag end's real, real short. I didn't, I, you can actually make it shorter than that. Again, I'm having trouble here because I'm using very much oversized stuff and I'm accenting how you get through this knot. But it's the improved clinch. I use this if I'm ever using on the end of leader and it's not a drop shot. Again, when I cut my tag end too, I leave a little bit of, a little bit of room there. A lot of people get their tag ends cut so, so close and you're just risking. I mean, if the fish have not seen your line, they ain't gonna worry about that tag. But that is the improved clinch. We'll tie it one more time for you. Out of all the things I've had go wrong fishing, knock on wood, never had a knot break on me. I've never lost a fish because of knots. So I trust this knot pretty much with my life. One more time. Here we go. Hook, line, go through the eye once, pull it up. And again, I'm gonna have a longer tag here just because I'm trying to accent it for the video. We're gonna do some twists. One, two, oops. Three, four, five. It's normally where I stop, about five. We'll take this, 
and go through right here. That little opening, you see that little V right there? I'm gonna go through that V. So go through the V right there. Now that I'm through the V, I've got this opening where I pulled that line through and I'm gonna go back through that part. I'm gonna hold, lick, 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 get a lot of lubricant on there, okay? A lot of saliva. And I'm just gonna pull it on down. Let me get a better angle on this, there we go. Pull it on down, cinch her down. And that is the improved clinch. Again, look at my tag end on this. Look at how much line I wasted. Not that much, I'm telling you. If you're worried about having to retie your leader, you don't wanna retie it so often, the improved clinch is the way to go, in my opinion, it's just super easy. Line through, a couple twists, go through the hole at the eye, and then through the hole you just made after you come back through the eye, boop, and you're done. Proof clinch. It's the best thing that I know to tie. It's the first knot I learned to tie when fishing. It's a really strong knot, really good knot. Again, just lick the fire out of that uh, knot when you got to cinch her down. All right, so our last and final knot is going to be the, uh, the knot that we're gonna use when we're making leader, okay? So we've talked about the Palomar knot and how you can use it on a drop shot, which you would need. Usually when I do a drop shot, I do braid to fluoro leader, but how do I get my main line if I'm using braid to my fluoro leader? And that's where the uni to uni knot comes into play, and that's our third knot, the uni to uni knot. I'm hopeful that this will show up. So we're done with our hook over here. This is a uni to uni. Hopefully y'all can see this. This is gonna be our braid line. So this is our main line coming from our reel. We'll lay it right here. And this is going to be, let me uh, cut this and lick it. See, I'm having a real hard time with this. Uh, the braided line that's gonna be our fluoro or mono leader. Hopefully y'all can see this. So what you're gonna do, main line is gonna be this braid and this white line is gonna be our leader. So it's probably fluoro um, or mono, one of the two, most likely fluoro. But essentially this is the knot. So I'm gonna take these two, lay them side by side, and I'm gonna take my fluoro, and I'm gonna make this curve right here, okay? With the two lines together. And with that curve, right? So I've got a nice little U here. I'm gonna take this end and inside of my, my hole I've made here, my circle I've made here, I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna twist this around both lines. Very, very easy knot. So I'm just sitting here spinning this in there. Spin it at least five times, okay? I may not do it for this video, but at least five times. And then you're just gonna cinch it down, okay? Boom. That's one end right there. A little bitty knot. So all I did, is we're gonna do the same thing over here. And this knot relies on one knot here and one knot here and you just pull them together. So I'll show you what that looks like. So here we go. These lines are together, white and green. They're together, they're bunched together. I've got my excess right here. I'm gonna make a circle and I'm just gonna start passing this around both lines. So I'm just twisting. Twisting and twisting at least five times, right? And then there's nothing to this. Once you're done, you just pull that line straight and it makes a little, little ring right there. Now I've got my ring right here and I've got a ring right there. And I'm gonna take in this hand, my leader, and in this hand, just my braid, I'm gonna pull them. Boop. They're gonna kiss right there in the middle, and that knot ain't going nowhere. Because these are two different size lines, um, the discrepancy there, it's gonna make one look bigger, but you can see with that braid right there, that green braid, how it really just hangs on there. That knot will go through your guides really easily. It's an easy knot to tie. Basically make a circle and circle in both knots or both lines together just in a circular pattern and boom. You have a line to line tie 
That is the uni to uni knot. And that is my go-to knot when I'm tying on the water, quick and easy, braid to, uh, to leader, or really anything to leader. I keep saying braid to fluoro because that's typically what I tie when I do this, but it's really to anything. You can tie any lines together like this. Uni to uni knot. All right, so we have tied my three go-to knots um, that I tie on the water. And for the three reasons I mentioned, either I don't want a long tag in because I'm tying the leader, and that would be the improved clinch, the Palomore knot, which is my go-to knot for anything. I mean, that, that knot is just so good. Um, all around knot, and it's also easy to tie, but it does leave a long tag in, so you have to take that into consideration. And then my uni to uni knot when I'm tying two lines together uh, to make have a leader. Um, I told you I was gonna throw in some bonus knots, so here are your bonus knots. Uh, number one, uh, which is a really good fluoro knot, one that I don't really tie often, but it is, it's just as easy. Um, it's got a little bit of my improved clinch and a little bit, a, a small remnant of the Palomore knot, um, but it's really good on fluoro and it goes by three different names. I've heard it called the three tag knot, the G-man knot for Gerald Swindell, or um, also known as the Shindo knot. So I'm gonna show you that one real quick right here. Um, just as easy, just as quick. Um, I just don't use it that much. So let's, let's, let's show you. The double shindo knot. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our line, preferably fluorocarbon. Um, this is a really good fluorocarbon knot. And what we're gonna do, in the essence of a Palomore knot, here I'm gonna actually cut this right here because it's starting to fray on me. And I'm gonna lick it. All right. In the same essence of a Palomore knot, we're gonna go through here, again, don't get it twisted, go through here twice. So we've got double through here, right? We're gonna take this end, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here and we're gonna twist it. About upwards of five times, okay? So you're going around very similar to my improved clinch. After you go around a few times, right here where my finger's sticking out, we're gonna come back through with that doubled knot but right, right through this knot, okay? So we've got some twists, and we've come back through the hole we've made, all right? And then you're just gonna pull. Now, I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to say this. You're gonna need to throw some tongue at that like you were on a hot date, okay? And that is the, the double shindo knot. And the reason they call it the three tag knot is because look, you got a tag up here. Again, this is gonna have a longer tag. Got a tag right there. And when you cut your knot right there, you have one, two. Hopefully y'all can see that. One, two, and a third up there. The three tag knot, the double shindo knot, the G-man knot, whatever you wanna call it. That's a really good fluorocarbon or fluoro to jig fluoro to really anything. Um, it's got a little bit of the essence of the Palomore and the fact that you're doubling through there um, and some essence of the clinch knot because you're twisting and you're actually using the lines twist right here to cinch down the improved clinch on, the, uh, on your tag right there. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, I hope you know why there are so many options to fishermen on these knots. It's because they all have different applications. And sure, I'm, I know I'm gonna get some blowback in the comments on, well, you know, when I tie a leader, um, I use an, an FG knot. Well, yeah, an FG knot's great, but it can be complicated. I mean, it's, a lot of these knots that are a little bit more complicated, all it takes is one little screw up, like a Palomore knot, if you twist the line, it makes it weaker. One little screw up like that and the knot's weak and you're gonna end up losing fish. I try to, for the most part, to be foolproof and that are easy, that you can do quickly and easily, um, and that are strong for them. I mean, that's what we all want, right? A strong, easy knot. Those are my top three, but I know the FG knot's probably gonna come up in the comments. The snail knot's probably gonna come up in the comments, just because those knots are, I mean, they're, they're great knots, but the snail knot, in my opinion, is not a good all-around knot. It's got a specific purpose. The FG knot has a specific purpose, but you can get away with doing a uni to uni too. I mean, hopefully you guys agree with that. 
And again, it's all about confidence. If you are confident and quick at tying a knot, stick with that knot. When you start venturing out and trying knots you've never tried before and you're not confident with, that's when you start losing fish because you're not tying the knot as good and you're also losing time because you're not as confident tying that knot. I can tie most of these knots in my sleep with my eyes covered um, just because I've done it so many times. So that's why I'm gonna stick with them. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. Leave me a comment below on which knot is your favorite knot. I kind of want to know, um, is there something I'm missing out on uh, on some of these knots? Um, as well as hit the red subscribe button. Turn it gray, hit the ding dong notifications if you want to be notified anytime I drop a new video. And we'll catch you on the next one. Later, guys.